that's really good. I, w- I want to discuss what happened the other day with Prager and what Shapiro had to say about the interaction because it can we kind of get into that anyway. Mm-hmm. So yesterday Shapiro talked about my conversation with Prager and um, yeah, it was it was good. I first of all I really appreciate what he had to say. He he referenced our conversation as a very interesting conversation that mm-hmm. everybody should watch. I was like I was happy to see him say that obviously. Okay, honestly, you guys need to go watch Matt Fratch show right now. It's one of the best conversations I've ever seen in my life. And he had a conversation with Dennis Prager, he was completely wrong, but I, I'll be honest with you again, you should go watch it. This is subscribe to my locals, okay folks? Did he give the whole plug? He said that. Yeah. And all then those the, words? Uh, but see, so he seems to differ from Prager. Prager wants to say that there's really no difference between sexual desire and lust. Shapiro kind of said that, but if he was going to make a distinction, I think he would say that sexual desire is lust in the wrong context. So he would say that when people usually talk about lust, they're talking about sexual desire being acted out in a non-loving, committed mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like, and if I'm misunderstanding, I, I, I want to take this back, but it sounds like he's saying that lust is essentially not possible within marriage or it really doesn't matter. Yeah. And I would say, and this might, I don't, I'm not committed to this definition, but I would say that like lust reduces a person to their sexual value. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean when I say lust, or at least that's the consequence of lust perhaps. And people have sexual value and that ought to be valued but when it's looked at or sought to be consumed apart from the good of the person Mm -hmm. that this is a degrading thing and if you want to say that lust is impossible within marriage then and here's a sort of phenomenological argument then it would follow that every woman who has ever complained about feeling used by her husband is wrong Mm -hmm. because lust is impossible or if she's not wrong it doesn't matter because lust is either not possible or inconsequential within marriage. Yeah, I think that's a very good argument. It's a very good argument for that position. And I think that saying um, <clears throat> saying you can't lust over a person who becomes your spouse is like saying you can't exploit a person who becomes your employee. Yeah. It's like these are still possible. But again, I mean, one of the complaints Shapiro had about our interaction is that we kept talking past each other. And I think I, I agree with would that. You? I, I, to a point, I would. Mm-hmm. But I would say we certainly tried to understand each other. Like, yeah. what do you mean by evil? What do yes. you mean by objectification? Yeah. What do you mean by lust? And how is that different from sexual desire? So we were trying to do that. But at the end of the day, he would still say things like masturbation is not a sin yeah. or it's masturbating to uh, images uh, that aren't um, real photos, say, is uh, is acceptable in certain circumstances. So there's definitely a divide. But yeah. No, what, I thought what you, did you, did you, you watched it? Oh, the, the Dennis Prager mm. video? Yeah, absolutely. I watched the Shapiro response, too. Oh, uh, we, we talked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really thought you did a great job. I thought you did a great job. I didn't actually understand the concern about you guys talking past each other. I didn't really think you were. Hmm. Maybe I'm in the minority there. I just I thought that there was a substantive difference that was being addressed. I don't know that you fully understood each other yeah. the entire time, but it's not like there was this key point that you guys truly agreed on the whole time and you kept missing it. Mm-hmm. There was really a substantial difference of opinion there that you were fleshing out. Now, our culture sees it as a nuanced distinction, one that doesn't matter to people as much, but it's a very real one. One of the things I, I mean, I, you always walk away from those interactions saying, ah, oh, I should have said this. Oh, or, yeah. Why did I say that? Or yeah. I could have said that, but that's a hundred percent the case. Um, one thing I wish I had done a better job at responding to was his argument about Onan and how this uh, isn't an argument against Quidditch Interruptus or spilling the seed specifically. So I want to let people know, I wrote a big article on this and just released it over at pintswithaquinas.com. And it was me saying, here's what I should have said. So if people are mm-hmm. interested, pintswithaquinas.com, you can check out my art- article there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that argument made, too. Like he was supposed yeah. to give her a child in this specific instance. That doesn't yeah. mean that everyone's supposed to give someone a child in, in any specific instance. But Yeah. 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 Um, what was your response to that? Would you want to summarize that? I would summarize it. First, I would say I think I'm somewhere in the middle <clears throat> between Prager and the Catholic apologist. I'm not convinced that the Onan incident is a knockdown, drag out argument against, say, coitus interruptus uh, or masturbation. I, I would still rely heavily on the natural law for that. Like yeah. The genitals are for something. Exactly. And when you act contrary to the point of that organ, you're doing something unreasonable. Um, but a, a couple of thoughts. If Onan had a refrain from sexual intercourse with this woman, it's it seems to me unlikely that he would have been killed. Um, Onan was killed by God, not for what he didn't do but for what he did do. And when you look at the graphic language of the spilling of the seed, Mm -hmm. and you consider the fact that in the Old Testament, 
authors don't use that kind of graphic language, like almost mm. ever. If they're talking about sex in an appropriate way, they might say Adam knew his wife, wife or yeah. he laid with her. So I think the graphic language is also an indicator. Also in uh, Deuteronomy, it lays out the actual uh, uh, what ought to happen if you don't mm -hmm. uh, if you don't give your brother's wife children. And it's a mild humiliation is the consequence. Basically, if you refuse, the wife, I think, takes off your sandal and spits on your foot or something like that. I wrote all of this in the argument, in the article. But basically, it's like, okay, well, that's a pretty- You don't get, it's not the death penalty. That's a pretty mild argument. Yeah. So you would have to also, you would also have to explain why that's the case. And then I also show a popular Jewish commentary that would side with with me and not with Prager's. That's kind of what I would say about that. But I, uh, I, I think that, Prager and Shapiro, as much respect I have, as I have for them, are just not the beneficiaries of Holy Mother Church. Yeah, and they should repent and accept Christ and the church and allow it to teach them, just like I need to continually do that and allow the church to teach me. Amen. And refine how I view men and women and sex. Yeah. Amen. Well, and this is something that won't be news to most of this audience, but one of the things that's very difficult about having these conversations with people is what they've internalized as a cultural narrative, which says Christians are saying we are better than you and holier than you. And you're a reprobate who needs me. And it's no, we're all in trouble here. We all need Christ. Yeah. I am blessed enough to have him. I want to share that with you. That's exactly right. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Would you like this beautiful, very high quality, definitely not made in China, not that there's anything wrong with that, Pints with Aquinas Beer Stein for free, sent to your door? Would you also like a copy of The Jill sent to your door four times a year? This is the Pints with Aquinas newspaper, by the way. If you do, go to mattfrad.locals.com and become an annual supporter for any amount. We'll send you that stuff for free and you get a bunch of other free things in return. You'll get more information by going over to mattfrad.locals.com. Thanks.